In China, World War II in the Pacific is called, for good reason, the war of resistance against Japanese aggression. But actually, Japan began its invasion of China in 1931, a full decade before Japan attacked the United States in Pearl Harbor. And full-blown war between China and Japan broke out in 1937, more than four years before the U.S. entered the war. China suffered enormously. Egregious oppression, multiple massacres, hideous tortures. According to the Chinese government, the Chinese people suffered 35 million casualties, 20 million deaths, and 15 million wounded. To commemorate the 70th anniversary of the victory over Japan, China is staging a massive military parade. What's the true history of China's role in the war? What's the meaning of the parade? What's the relevance to contemporary geopolitics and China-U.S. relations? Can re-examining China's anti-Japanese aggression war bring us closer to China? Seventy years ago, on September 2, 1945, Representatives from China, United States, and other allied powers gathered on the deck of the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay to sign Japan's instrument of surrender with the Japanese representatives. The next day, September 3rd, the Japanese army in China formally surrendered to the Chinese government. The whole of China was in jubilation. It marked the first outright victory over a foreign invader in modern Chinese history. Therefore, September 3rd was chosen as the official victory day. But the cost of victory was huge, tens of millions dead and wounded. Painful memories seared on the minds of survivors. China's fight against Japanese invaders not only stopped the attempt to make China a colony of Japan, it also gave Russia, the U.S., and other allies breathing time to gather their forces. General Law, China is now commemorating the 70th anniversary of its victory in the war of resistance against Japanese aggression, which the rest of the world calls World War II. China feels that its role in the, in the war and its great suffering is not appreciated by the West. Uh, why, why is this so? China's counter-attack is in the world's counter-attack. We are a very important part of China's counter-attack. China's counter-attack is the world's counter-attack of the West. Luo Yuan is a member of the CPPCC. Now he's serving as the Vice President and Secretary General of China's Strategy Culture Promotion Association. He also holds the rank of Major General. This was recognized by the you call China a forgotten ally in uh, World War II. Uh, what does it mean that China is a forgotten ally, and why do you think it happened? I do use the term forgotten ally very deliberately for China's role during World War II. Rana Mitter is a professor of the history and politics of modern China at Oxford University. His book, Forgotten Ally, China's World War II, 1937-1945 has been well received by critics. Because I think that if you walk down a street in London or New York and asked even a member of the public who was quite savvy about World War II history, maybe a World War II buff, what China's contribution was to World War II, you would get very little detail. Some people wouldn't even know that China had been in the war. So the point is that a country which held down more than half a million Japanese troops on its territory made a contribution of considerable size to the Allied cause. And I think it's important that just because of the Cold War, 
which is where I think the problem started, we shouldn't forget that Chinese contribution to the overall Allied victory. China claims that 35 million casualties were suffered by its uh, people, uh, 20 million dead, 15 million wounded. Uh, Western scholars, uh, while acknowledging it was many millions and horrific, still uh, would question those numbers at that level. Is there a, co a consensus, uh, independent scholarly view of, of what the range of numbers should be? The range of numbers generally runs um, across the numbers that you've talked about, but I would say that most Westerners, and indeed a lot of Chinese academics who look in detail at the figures, would go for um, a still horrific but lower number of deaths during the war. I've given the number 14, which having looked at research I'm comfortable with, I will say that there are some scholars who might put it a little bit less into uh, the kind of 8 to 10 million category. I think we can go higher. But we should remember that the 35 million figure brings together wounded as well as killed. When we talk about 14 million or so deaths, not every single one of those deaths by any means is at the hands of a Japanese holding a bayonet. That's not a reasonable way to think about it. What about the great suffering that the Chinese people endured during the war? In the West, we know that there was great suffering, but it's very general. These shots were filmed in Nanjing in December 1937. The man who shot the film was an American missionary by the name of John Magee. Magee had lived in Nanjing for 26 years when the Japanese army captured the city. He ignored the American embassy's advice to evacuate and chose to stay. Magee and other foreigners created a safety zone for tens of thousands of Chinese people. The missionary also had a camera. When tens of thousands of wounded Chinese soldiers, their families and civilians swarmed into this narrow belt along the river in an effort to escape from Nanjing, they soon found themselves surrounded by the Japanese army. There were even battleships in the nearby waters. Then the slaughter began as shells and grenades started raining down. Finally, the Japanese soldiers drove survivors into the river where they drowned. More than 57,000 people were killed in this single event. What was the action of the Japanese soldiers toward the civilian Chinese men after they had possession of the city of Nankin on December 13, 1937? The killing began immediately in several ways, often by individual Ch Japanese soldiers uh, or up to 30 soldiers together going about, each one seeming to have the power of life or death. And then soon there was organized killing of great bodies of men. These people were being killed by rifle fire and machine gun principally. Also we knew of groups of several hundred being bayoneted to death According to the trial of war criminals involved in the Nanjing Massacre, more than 300,000 people were slaughtered in the atrocity. 90,000 of them were prisoners of war. The Nanjing War Crimes Tribunal reported that 190,000 people were killed in 28 mass slaughters. One of the things that makes World War II in China so similar in a sense to the horrific war in Europe is that it was a war of civilian deaths. So when we try and count the ways in which people died, it includes uh, a variety of uh, massacres at the beginning of the, the war years, 37, 38, the Japanese invading large parts of eastern China, often torched or uh, put to death very large numbers of civilians as they tried to subdue various cities. During the Second World War, as many as 700,000 women became comfort women, a euphemism for girls who were forced into the Japanese army's brothels. Most of them came from China, South Korea, Indonesia, and other Asian countries. Seventy years on, those women who endured unimaginable pain and suffering are still looking for closure. Jenrov is an Indonesian-born Holander. She is the first European to stand up and speak about the painful memories of being a sex slave during the war. Uh, then it came my turn, you know, and I was dragged into my into this in the bedroom and I tell you I fought and fought 
and fought this man. I thought, he's not going to rape me, he's not going to get me. I kicked him, I punched him, I, I you know, I did everything I could. But, I mean, what can you do? I was only a young girl and he, he was a strong soldier. I've never known, I've never given his name in public before, but I will do it now. His name was Mihashi. But the Japanese government has denied any responsibility, sparking anger in Asian countries that suffered at the hands of Japanese soldiers during the war. South Korea was one of them. The women now in their 80s and 90s say they will continue to fight for an official apology and compensation, which they hope to get before they die. What about some reports that um, circulated uh, about medical experiments that the Japanese uh, conducted on uh, Chinese very definitely and also other foreigners? Is there truth to those rumors? Uh, during the war of resistance against Japanese aggression, the Japanese used biological warfare and performed lethal human experiments in China through its secret army known as Unit 731. The unit was officially known as the Epidemic Prevention and Water Purification Department of the Guantong Army. Among the unit's most infamous experiments are ones called vivisections, where prisoners were dissected alive, usually without anesthesia, to study the effects of various procedures or diseases, such as amputations or gangri. The infected and vivisected prisoners included pregnant women, the elderly, children, and infants. According to investigations into Japan's germ warfare in China, biological weapons killed about 650,000 people during the war. While these heinous experiments were supported inside the army, there are attempts to cover them up to the outside world. Researchers recently discovered incineration pits and traces of explosives left at the unit's former headquarters that suggest that the Japanese army tried to destroy evidence of war crimes before retreating. From emerging powers to expanding partnerships, from fighting poverty to combating climate change, booming economies, war-ravaged nations, and everything in between. We capture the changes affecting the most dynamic and diverse continent on the planet, taking you beyond the headlines to the people and their stories. Asia Today, delivering Asia to the world. Let's talk a little bit about the history of China's battling with Japan itself. Uh, th there has been a perception in the West that the uh, official CPC history of the war does not give sufficient credit to the nationalists or the Kuomintang forces who were battling against the uh, Japanese invaders. Uh, wh what is the uh, official um, 
uh, CPC understanding of the role of the Kuomintang during the anti-Japanese war. 现在对于国民党在抗战中的地位和作用呢，我觉得在中国大陆方面啊，已经开始对它有一个更加客观、公正的一个评价啊。就是我们认为抗日战争呢是中华民族的伟大胜利，而不是说某一党、某一派的胜利。比如在这次这个我们举行的抗日战争胜利七十年的阅兵当中，我们也邀请了国民党的一些抗战。老兵来参加我们的这个游行行列啊，在我们公布的这个抗战烈士的名单当中，也有国民党这些呃抗战将领的名单。The fact that at the heart of the parade were veterans aged between 90 and 102 years old from both the Chinese Communist Party and the former Nationalist Party, which ran China during the war years, suggests that. Nowadays, China is opening up its narrative about the war. It's not sticking to a rather old-fashioned story that only one party, the Communists, were involved in running the war with no other involvement. And I think that's a sign that parts of China, where the Communist role in the war was maybe not so extensive, the Southwest is an example of that, are now being brought into the national story. 同时，我们要强调，中国共产党在抗日战争中，我们也做出了重大的贡献。我们现在用了一个“中流砥柱”这个词，现在有些人对这个词呢不太理解，甚至有些非议。我只想说，第一，中国共产党提出了一个这个全民族的抗日民族统一阵线，这就解决了长期困扰中国的一个政治号召力的问题。那么第二个，中国共产党提出了一个正确的战争指导路线。提出了一个战略方针的问题，就是持久战。另外呢，我们把这个游击战上升到一个战略的高度。那么第三大贡献就是中国共产党在抗日根据地，我们实行了民族民主政策，啊，减租减息啊，再一个就是实行三三制的这种政权建设。所以当时。美国的许多友好友人，像斯诺啊，像这个史史莫特莱啊女士，他们都到这个延安，到我们的抗日根据地去参观以后，他们得出一个印象：中国的希望在共产党。所以说，中国共产党在这时候，我们是做出了重大贡献。如果没有中国共产党在敌后进行这种抗战，那么国民党他政权也是岌岌可危的。所以在这时候呢，我觉得不是要争共产党的功劳大呢，还是国民党的功劳大。作为我们中华民族，在抗日战争中，我们都做出了我们的重大贡献。所以，抗日战争是中华民族的伟大胜利。What can we learn by reflecting on this time when America and China were really allies? When America helped China, China helped the war effort. That America and China worked together. Can we learn? Lessons and reflect on that time, and can that help us with the current uh, areas of uh, of conflict between our two countries? 中美两国在共同对付日本法西斯方面，我们是同盟国，而且我们有了非常好的这种这个合作啊。呃，我们永远不会忘记这个陈纳德先生他组织的这个这个飞虎队。The Chinese endured Japan's relentless aerial bombardment during the War of Resistance, as it had hindered the Japanese invaders to occupy the whole Chinese territory. American Claire Lee Shenault saw it firsthand. After moving to China in 1937, Shenault had been a captain in the U.S. Air Force, but resigned. Some say he was pushed out. As China's chief air advisor, he went back to Washington to lobby for help. The result. Covert American support for the Chinese military, including money, material, and man. Shenault returned to China with more than 300 others, members of the newly formed American Volunteer Group of the Chinese Air Force, American aviators flying American planes wearing Chinese uniforms. Chen Xiangmei was a journalist covering the war and the Americans, and Shenault, whom she would eventually marry. To me, it's a very humble. Person and、uh, very serious about 
his work. And uh, truly, truly love Chinese people in China. At a time when U.S. strategy emphasized high-altitude bombing, Shenot advocated pursuit, fighter planes intercepting enemy aircraft. Just 12 days after Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, Shenot's squadrons of P-40 Warhawks saw their first action, shooting down several Japanese bombers heading to Kunming. Over the next seven months, the AVG, dubbed the Flying Tigers, would destroy around 300 enemy aircraft most of them in aerial combat. When Shenot left China in 1945, huge crowds showed up to push his car down the street. They said not since Marco Polo had a foreigner won the hearts and minds of the Chinese people. Shenot wept as he waved goodbye. But his legacy still reminds people of the friendship between Americans and Chinese during the war. Uh, a few months ago, there was a flood <laughs> because of a garage collapse in our apartment complex. So I went downstairs to our storage. We have some trunks. And I found my father's jacket. This is from uh, the jacket he wore. And in the pocket, there was a schedule. Um, this is 1945, and he was in Kunming then. And the schedule discusses a competition in basketball. American soldiers with Chinese soldiers together okay. as a tournament and my father was there to give a prize. So this dates from April 45, exactly 70 years ago. And so um, he was not only involved in, in fighting and in teaching pilots to fight the Japanese, but he was also involved in raising money for the war and for uh, goodwill to um, uh, uh, Chinese and, and American teams to come together for athletics. Yeah, so he had a very full job in China. Number我认为这种这个美好的记忆，我们应该把它延续下来啊。这个我们在呃庆祝世界反法西战争和抗日战争胜利七十周年的时候，我们中美双方应该共同来梳理这一段啊。我们这一个呃这么这么一段共同的
uh, with the parade and with so many new military weapons, or is there multiple messages? Uh, 阅兵来展现我们中国的一种和平的诚意，我们不允许别的国家对我们构成威胁，我们要保护我们自己国土的安全。第二就是居民心，就是把这个老百姓大家都这个聚集在我们这个呃现在实行的这个两个一百年实行